you will not believe, I mean, I cannot believe people are actually talking about it. Like, how can this even be a talking point? How can anybody in their right minds think that this guy is actually an option for Chanel? Hi guys and welcome to another fashion news chat video. Boy do I have news for you. First of all I'm gonna start with of course Chanel. We still do not know who's gonna be the new head designer, if there's gonna be one big name or if they're gonna take another name from already Chanel employees like they did with Virginie Viard. Information that's coming out in the last weeks from the unconfirmed and unknown sources in the fashion industry is that Simone Port de Jacquemus has actually been seen at Chanel headquarters multiple times which we don't know what's happening but it is kind of a giveaway if you visit Chanel headquarters and if you're a designer and in this time when we know they're looking I have tried to search the internet for this specific information and the only video that I found talking about this specific information is actually Super Day Cop. I'm gonna link his video below because he actually does have like a first-hand information so I'm gonna let him tell you his side of the story but I have found some pieces of the information from the Fashion Network web pages and some of them seem to confirm that Jacquemus at least is an option. He is not confirmed yet. For a lot of people that's a lot of raised eyebrows because if you think about Jacquemus pieces and his style of designing I don't see Chanel anywhere in there but you know that's just me maybe you see it better maybe heads of Chanel will see it better who knows. The thing is that Jacquemus actually got like a very special award from Neiman Marcus this year for innovation in the field of fashion and this was pretty new this was in the spring so he's definitely on the map. He has been a good friend with Karl Lagerfeld uh, there's also a lot of information about how they planned maybe to collaborate on some pieces or even maybe a collection, who knows. So it's not a long stretch to see Jacquemus in, in that kind of context at Chanel, but through his designs, who knows. One of the discussions that was held at Paris Fashion Week was that Chanel feels that it has to lead. Um, in the fashion world. They don't see themselves as being a fashion house that follows but the fashion house who has to lead and that was one of the critique that was kind of aimed at Virginie Viard that she was not leading in the fashion sense. I mean she earned Chanel owners a great deal of money and Chanel definitely became even more successful of a brand but her pieces were not exactly leading styles in the fashion circles and apparently that was not what Chanel wanted. Something was really different this year. If you read the article from The Cut, I'm gonna link it down below, it actually describes the experience of being at this year's Chanel Paris Fashion Week show. Uh, one shock was that it actually started almost on time. It was supposed to start at 10 and it started 10 minutes later, which is really, really fast for fashion shows. I've been to a few fashion shows uh, during, you know, fashion weeks and it's definitely true. Most of them do not start on time and you kind of calculate that if it says that it's going to start at 10, it's usually going to start by like 10.30 or maybe 10.20, definitely not 10.10. So that was a really weird experience and nobody was talking before the show started. It was a really weird atmosphere and remember this was like maybe two weeks after Virginie Viard left. We can imagine that it was a weird atmosphere knowing that you don't have had designer present, you don't know how many of this collection was actually her work, what others did, but I actually agree with Super Jacob on this, that there is no way in hell any kind of fashion house, any kind of fashion house in the world that can actually finish the collection that it's not already mostly finished in two weeks. It's impossible. It takes months, if not a year or two years, to put together a collection like this. And nobody's gonna persuade me, like they didn't persuade Super Jacob, that this collection from the Paris Fashion Week, the special collection that was unveiled in Paris on June 25th, I think, that this was not 
like 99.99% Virginie Viard's work. Uh, it just couldn't be any other way because in two weeks there's not really much you can do. So the collection had to be finished and it had to be finished obviously by her because she was then the head designer. So the whole vibe is just weird right now. We still don't know what's going to happen there. But, you know, Jacquemus being seen at Chanel offices from some, some sources, it's weird. I don't, I don't know what to make of it. I'm pretty sure there is not a designer in the world who would not try to get this job now that it's available because it doesn't matter what we say about Chanel quality here on YouTube, how we are discussing certain aspects of luxury fashion. Chanel is one of the top fashion houses in the world, one of the oldest fashion houses, well-known fashion houses in the world. It's not going to go anywhere. It doesn't matter what we talk about, it's not going to go anywhere. And being a head designer at that kind of fashion house is a big deal. It's a big freaking deal, okay? So people will do a lot of things to get that job and it depends on Chanel's vision who they will hire. If they will take somebody from the outside, I still root for Sarah Burton, by the way, uh, or if they're gonna just kind of make like a collective designer group and it's not gonna be just like one person heading the Chanel. Because again, let me remind you, Chanel wants to lead, which makes sense, and you need a special type of designer if you want to create something that's really new, that it's not like a similar version of something that somebody else has already done. And there is not a lot of designers out there who can do this, who can take Chanel's legacy and take Chanel's visuals that we recognize as Chanel's and then put their own stamp on it. it it's not an easy job. You will not believe, I mean, I cannot believe people are actually talking about it. Like, how can this even be a talking point? How can anybody in their right minds think that this guy is actually an option for Chanel? Like, where were you? Like, under a rock until last year? <laughs> I am talking about, my dear friends, about John freaking Galliano. Yes, if you have fallen down from your chair right now, I am with you. I totally get you why. Because John Galliano was huge. When he was at Dior, I mean, we all know him from this famous newspaper dress that Carrie Bradshaw wore in one of the seasons of Sex and the City. And he was just the designer of a certain era. You couldn't look anywhere without seeing his influence. Even on High Street, there were pieces that were kind of trickling down from, you know, his Dior pieces to the High Street fashion. And he was just the designer of the era at the time. And then the drunken night in Paris happened and he had these really anti-Semitic and really, really horrible, horrible things he said that it doesn't matter the situation, it doesn't matter the influence you were under. These are just not the things that you say to any, any human being in the world. You, ju you just don't do that. So he was fired from Dior like overnight and everybody thought his career was over. So Galliano was with fashion house Margiela since 2014. I think that year was his first collection for that house. And just now the information came that he didn't sign another contract for Margiela, even though the head bosses have wanted him to. So they definitely wanted him. They told this that they wanted him to stay for another year, two, three, four, five, whatever. They wanted to keep him as a head designer. For Margiela fashion shows, Galliano never took a bow at the end of the fashion show because that was not in keeping with tradition of the fashion house. So he never took like a bow, but you know, it was his collection and everybody knew that. And now he is on the market. So people are speculating if he will go back to Dior, which, you know, Maria Grazia Ciuri is doing a great job there. So I see absolutely no reason to replace her. You know, but he was fired from Dior. So who knows? Maybe even Galliano would not want to go back there. Who knows? But then the news kind of hit that he didn't want to sign another contract because maybe he is eyeing Chanel top job. Now, again, I have to emphasize, this is just speculation. Whatever I'm saying in this video is for entertainment purposes only. I do not have first-hand information, so I'm just making my conclusions from the articles that I could find online. The articles are from the, like, reliable news sources, so it's news, not gossip. But 
we don't know why he didn't want to stay at Margiela longer. I mean, he's been there for 10 years, maybe he wanted a change. It was kind of given that something is happening because apparently he deleted all of his Margiela Instagram posts and photos like a few months ago. So it was kind of evident that he's preparing for a new chapter. And, you know, this is the case. He's going somewhere else, that's for sure, because he's not going to stay at Margiela. But how can anybody in their right mind think that Chanel would ever have him? I mean, come on, that thing in Paris years ago was, was huge. Okay, this is the moment that your career, it, it's very hard to recover from that. And do not forget that Chanel is owned by a very quiet, conservative Jewish family. And Galliano is filmed, there's a video out there, him being very anti-Semitic. And this, I don't think it will go well with, with Chanel. I just, I cannot see how, how can you put these two together. It's just, in, in my mind, I don't see this working. But we cannot ignore that this is business, that John Galliano is a freaking amazing designer, and Chanel is a brand who needs a designer with a vision. And whatever else we can say about John Galliano that's not necessarily good, one of the things that's definitely good about him that he does have a vision. That, has, that he has proven time and time again, so he's definitely a visionary designer and this is exactly the type of designer Chanel needs but still I I just don't see it happening I mean correct me if you think differently but I don't think this <laughs> it's like water and oil it's just not gonna mix well some of the sources actually report that Galliano might go to Fendi so we're gonna keep our eyes open what's gonna happening at Fendi if he's gonna, you know, jump ship and go there. Uh, of course, Fendi was like not commenting on this when he, they were re approached by journalists, uh, they didn't comment on it, but they never do. So that doesn't really tell us anything. You know, Chanel is a special fashion house, that's for sure. And maybe if you're old enough, you will remember. And if not, if you follow fashion news, maybe you read about it, that Karl Lagerfeld, who was actually hired by Chanel in 1983, he actually said once in one interview that um, designing for Chanel is like decorating a Christmas tree. That you have like the base and you just add a little touches here and there. And that's how you make a new collection for Chanel. But there was the defining moment in the 90s. And I actually had to look this up because I don't remember when exactly that happened. And in the late 90s, LVMH was shaking up the industry when they hired young talents such as John Galliano, Eddie Dior, and Marc Jacobs for Louis Vuitton. So that was late 90s. And Chanel at that time has become a bit, not really stale, but just not so much fresh as maybe some other fashion brands. And Lagerfeld, who of course never liked to be left behind, he really kind of changed the designs, creating monumental fantasy sets, a beach, a spaceship, a huge iceberg, all of that was for Chanel shows. And Chanel haven't hired any designers since Lagerfeld in 1983. So, you know, we're gonna just keep on guessing. Again, nobody knows for sure what's gonna happen, but I find this really entertaining and really interesting to see how the cards will kind of shuffle, who will land where, because we actually have a lot of designers on the loose right now. So it's gonna be very interesting to see who's gonna, you know, which house is gonna pick which designer. So, you know, we're gonna keep our eyes and our ears open. And for those of you who do not have time to search for all this information around the web, don't worry, you have me for that. I'm in the pink mode today. As you can see, I have my pink jumpsuit on and you can see more of it and how I pair it with different styles in this video. If you haven't seen it, go knock yourself out. Thanks for watching guys. Leave your comments below and of course have a lovely day and I will see you in the next video.